I'm Patty Fernandez and I'm an art teacher. Visit my website at pattyfernandezartist.com. Okay, let's draw. Today's project is how to draw Sutter's Mill from the Gold Rush. I come right up here at the top and I put a dot. And from that dot, I'm going to draw a straight diagonal down on the left. Come back to the dot, straight diagonal down on the right. Come back to the dot again. I'm going to draw a straight diagonal out, straight diagonal down, straight diagonal over, and connect. I come inside this space and I'm just going to mimic straight diagonal up, straight diagonal down, and leave it floating. There's going to be a lot of floating lines here. Okay. Right where I stop over here on the left, I'm just going to draw a straight line down, straight line over, straight line up, straight diagonal, connect. And over here on the right, I'm going to draw a straight line down, straight line over, straight line up, and draw a little straight line on the left, up, and connect. Coming over to the right hand side, I'm going to draw straight line, straight line, straight line up, connect. And inside, I'm going to draw one, two straight diagonal lines, one, two straight diagonal lines. I come back over and I am going to draw another skinny rectangle, straight line, straight line, straight line, up, connect, and I'm going to come down to the bottom and I'm going to draw a skinny rectangle down, straight line, straight line, leave it floating, Come over back here again. We're going to draw another straight line over, connect. Underneath, we're going to draw another straight line, straight line, leave it floating. And now we're going to draw a straight diagonal once, straight diagonal twice. Come on this side, draw a straight diagonal, jump over, straight diagonal. All of these lines, leave them floating. Okay. Now come over here up on the left. And we're just going to draw one, two, three straight diagonal lines. One, two, three straight lines. One, two, three straight lines. Come on this side and we're going to draw one, two, three straight lines. One, two, three straight lines. One, two, three straight lines. Come right here in the center and these are floaters. We're going to draw three, one, two skinny rectangles, three, and then we're going to draw straight diagonal, straight line, straight diagonal. Come back to the left. We're going to draw a straight line down, and let's draw another, whoops, straight line across. Straight line, jump over, straight line, connect. We're going to come back up to the top and we're just going to draw a straight line, jump over, straight line, jump over, straight line. Now when I looked at this, I thought, whoa, this is kind of goofy looking, but that was the way he built it. It's kind of ramshackle. That means there's little tiny pieces of wood going all over the place. But Maybe they didn't have access to materials. Anyways, I'm filling this all in with really skinny straight lines. Jump over. Skinny straight lines. Jump over your diagonals. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Come back over here on the left. We're just going to draw a straight line. Straight line. And then those diagonals again. Straight diagonal, leave it floating. Straight line, jump over. Straight line, a straight line. Now, you might say, what are all of these floating lines? Why are they happening? That's because Sutter's Mill is in a river. 
So we're just going to draw a wavy line going off the page. Come on the right hand side, wavy line going off the page. We're going to go zigzag, 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 and cover up these floating lines with grass. Do a couple of zigzags, zigzags, okay. Come over to the actual river. Now, connect all of these little lines that are floating. Because now you're going to draw some wavy lines, wavy lines, wavy lines inside. And now, curve line, wavy line, curve line, wavy line, curve line, wavy line. Okay, those are rocks. Okay. I think that's all. We will find out real quick once we start drawing, I mean coloring. Come over here and let's put some zigzags on the uh, left hand side also. Alright, let's see how we are going to color this in. Okay, so that you can see what you are coloring, you're going to take your black and you're going to color inside this space. This is an open space. And when I was reading up on Sutter's Mill, this was a lumber mill. So it basically was just open with a covering. So that's going to be black. This space down here, these are going to be black. And this is so you can see what you're doing. Because otherwise, there's a lot of detail going on here. See, and I knew I would forget something. There should be, right here, a diagonal and a diagonal line, so throw those in, because this space, it should be black. So you can see it's like a little shack standing in the middle of a river, or on by a river. This should all be black. Now if it's black, it's open space. Okay, this is all open space. This is open space. Okay, and this is open space. It's a lumber mill, so I guess it was open because it was cutting wood. Okay, I think that's that, because now you're going to come in with your brown, and you're just going to fill this space in with brown. Just follow your lines. <clears throat> follow your lines. This middle space should be black. Follow your lines. All of this is the framing of the sawmill. Okay, this should all be black. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow the direction I think the wood was placed. Okay, so all of these skinny lines, these should all just have a line of color, brown. You could double color this, but I'm going to keep it simple because the drawing is pretty intense. This should be brown. This should all be brown. The whole thing is brown. Okay. And like I said, in order to add a little bit of color, when I did the roof, I put some orange on it just to kind of break that color up. So I'm going to double color this part. Put some, some orange, and then go over it with the brown, just to give it a little bit more color. And these should all be brown. These are all slabs, slats of wood. And like I said, I'm assuming, I could be wrong, but I'm assuming that it was put together this way. One, because they might not have had access to materials, a lot of wood. But also, they want to keep it open. Oh, here, this should be brown too, sorry. They need to keep it open because it's a lumber mill, so there's all kinds of sawdust. These are rocks. I'm going to put a little bit of brown on these. If you have gray, you can go over your rocks. And then, I'm going to take my blue. And I'm just going to put a couple of lines of brown, but I'm going to take my blue 
and color in my river blue. Now this was the south fork of the American River. So it was a pretty big river. All the way off. You guys will do way better than me. But you get the general idea for these blocks of color. Oops. See, and once you start coloring, it's like, hello, this is wood. There's all this wood framing. You'll do it once you start coloring. You'll see, oh, I forgot that. All right. Now, I did double color on the grass. I started out with a light green. Then on my zigzags, I came in with my dark green. Give it a little bit of depth, not a lot. And naturally, I did my background with straight blue-green turquoise lines. But then I loop-de-looped -looped around it. Okay. So, James W. Marshall was building a sawmill for Captain Sutter. Using water from the South Fork of the American River, he noticed several flakes of metal. Once he got a better look, he recognized it to be gold. And they tried to keep it a secret, but they ended up not being able to be quiet. And that is what triggered the gold rush. Okay, let's see what this looks like all colored in. Okay, here's Sutter's Mill all colored in. You can visit the actual um, location um, as, a, as a state park. Okay, bye-bye.